How you doing? This is brother Jawanza Israel. I just want to come to you in the spirit today and talk to you about something that was put on me to talk about. Now, I've been fighting against, fighting a battle, fighting against the enemy, fighting and battling some illness, some sickness, and it's been it's been extremely hard. I've I've always been a person who's been um healthy their whole life, never had to really go to the doctor or deal with anything like that. And to be in this state and not really know what's going on exactly, to be, you know, taking the herbs and changing my, my eating habits around and it's and, you know, still you know, battling this and, you know, some days it's good days and other days it's bad days, but trying to stay positive through all this. And I know it's a lot of people that's going through different things like this and other types of things, maybe losing a family member, maybe battling depression, battling some type of sickness or illness, um, you know, financial trouble, just anything that's weighing on your spirit, weighing on you mentally, physically, emotionally. And I just want to come to you today and just talk about humility and faith. Often we just so engulfed in everyday life that we don't even get a chance to be humble but at some point we gonna all be humble and my personal testimony i've been humbled to the point where um basically it's hard for me to do a lot of things for myself i can get up and go to the bathroom brush my teeth that type of stuff but even that is a task um but it's hard for me to get to the store to get any food. I have to depend on um, my mother and my woman to do everything, basically. And that's that's hard for a person who's been independent their whole life. And to also know, you know, I have children. You can't play with your children like you want to. You can kind of sit with them in the bed or something. But... You can't really play with them and get up and run around. And that's hard for the children because they don't really understand that. They so used to dad being able to run around with them. And I used to be the big, you know, the muscle man, the man that, you know, play basketball and, you know, do pull-ups and push-ups and lift weights and do all of that. And I went from that to not being able to have much strength at all. And that's very humbling. Biblically, we can liken it, I think about Job. The Most High said Job was blameless and righteous, the most upstanding, upright man that he had. And he still let Satan take him through a whole lot of challenges and tests and things that was aimed to destroy him and destroy his faith. I'm not comparing myself to Job, but we are given these stories biblically so we can draw lessons and comparisons, so we can learn things about faith and humility. I had a my ego was getting out of control, at least like in my house. I was, you know, I think I had good intentions. I wanted my house to be ran a certain way and everything like that. But I was being harsh with my woman and, um, you know, being egotistical coming from the, the you know, I'm the man of the house and, you do what I say, and I, you know, that standpoint, I was getting a lot of out of hand with that. 
But boy, did God have a way of humbling you. And that same woman that times I would talk to crazy is the same woman that I need to cook for me, to pick this up, to help me get to the doctor's appointments, to, you know, pick up something from the health food store or whatever I need between her and my mom. So that's another topic I wanted to touch on. It's a lot of, excuse me, it's a lot of men out here, black men in particular that I'm talking about, going online, bashing black women and stuff like that. Now, that's one thing if you was, you know, you wanted to correct or point out a certain behavior, but typically... It takes women to correct women because that's typically who they're going to listen to if they are, they do have bad feelings about, uh, you know, brothers through certain experiences they've been through, then it's less likely that a black man is going to be able to correct them. But it might be possible, but it depends on where your spirit and where your intentions are coming from. But that notion of getting online or going to the media and just bashing black women or even black women and doing it to black men, like, that's, it's so disheartening, it's so disgusting to do that to each other as a race. You typically don't see others doing that to each other. Now, they may do it behind the scenes, but they're not going to do it in public. We need each other. We're each other's counterparts. And neither is going to rise higher than the other. So black women can't rise without black men and black men can't rise without black women. So when you go online and you sit up and bash the sisters, oh, look at these ghetto black women. You find clips of a black woman doing something uh, rude or, you know, something just out of order. It could even be bad or disgusting behavior. And then you put it to the media as if, oh, this is the norm. This is all black women. You don't know anything, A, from a 30-second clip. It's only so many conclusions you can draw from a 30-second to a two-minute clip. And then also, you don't want to point that picture out that that's all black women because it's not. At the end of the day as many bad things as I could say about what a black woman may do or some black women do, I can say a whole lot of good things too because at the end of the day, anytime I ever needed help in my life, for the most part, I would say 90 to 95% of the time, it wasn't no black man that came to my aid. It was a black woman, whether that been my mother, whether that been you know, a girlfriend, a baby mama, or, you know, a grandmother, a auntie, something like that. It's always been the feminine energy that's then came to my aid. And at the end of the day, I know pretty much most brothers could say the same thing. If something happened with you today, most brothers is going to their mother, they going to their wife, they going to their girlfriend, their baby mama, they not going to no man. Some might have a scenario where your brother might loan you some money or, you know, let you stay on the couch if something happened with your place for a while. But the majority of the time, it's a woman helping you. And then on the flip side, for black women, I always talking about all black men are bad and how much, you know, wrong we do to them at the end of the day. If somebody break into your house or you hear a strange sound, you're going to wake your husband up, your boyfriend, or your older son. If you need your car fix, you're going to a man. If you need something done in the yard, you're going to a man. You know, it's a lot of scenarios where you calling on a brother to help you. So don't say that all black men are bad. Because we know stuff like that is so far from true. Then you condemning your son, 
your father, your brother, your husband, or any future man that you will have, you already done said, all men are bad, so why would you expect to get something good out the deal? You done already professed that with your mouth, so we have to be careful what we say out of our mouths too because the tongue is powerful. So I just want to tell y'all, man, just be humble. Try to keep y'all egos intact because that ego, ego can destroy you. That along with fear. And sometimes when this is like therapy for me because I can't really get up and do much. I can do little little things here and there, but I just felt like I want I need to stay positive and if I can help anybody else that may be going through something, stay positive, then I feel like I'm passing along good fortune. I'm passing along a good message. And I'm passing along the most high matches because at the end of the day, that's typically what we're here for is to learn lessons, show love to each other, help each other out. And we need to get back to that, especially as a black race in the black community, because so many times we got so much bad stuff to say about each other, so much wrong to point out. But where's the people that's pointing out the, the right and the things that are going good? Because there's plenty of people that do good stuff every day. I see little videos of children, melanated children that then graduated four, five, six grades ahead and geniuses and helping their community and trying to do this. But this is not the stuff that anybody talks about. Everybody want to talk about the negative, or not saying everybody, I take that back. Many people want to talk about the negative, but they don't want to talk about the positive. And at the end of the day, that's what we need. It's real out here. Too many people are struggling, and they're trying to mask things by showing these little clips, trying to make it seem like their life is so great and we all living in the same world. And even if your life is great right now, you going to go through some trials and tribulations. It's coming. You going to be humble before the most high. It's, it's, it's definite. And there's so many people battling illnesses out here. Doctors can't figure it out, won't figure it out. Trust me, I know. Oh, you don't have the right insurance. Uh, oh, we can't get you an appointment to two, three, four, five months later. Meanwhile, the person suffering the whole time. So at the end of the day, the only thing you got to come to is the creator, is the most high. Yah is the only thing that's Hebrew. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, Yahshua, all those are Hebrew for God or Jesus. You know, it's many names. We don't need to get into what's the correct name because it's just different interpretations if the creator has been around since the beginning of the time millions and millions of years ago the creator has had all type of names a lot of times we get stuck into that we divide by oh i'm right you're right with this name or your particular faith belief is wrong man is wrong and that's another way just to keep people fighting and divided and at the end of the day, you're not going to get everybody to believe the exact same thing. It's almost impossible. Heck, you can't even get everybody in your household most of the time to agree with the same thing, let alone you're going to get everybody in the world. You're going to get every melanated person in the world to agree upon the same thing. It's not going to happen. That'll never happen. But you can respect other people. And we all in the human existence. We in the physical. So we all definitely got that in common. We in this physical existence. And as long as you in this physical existence. You're going to experience good. Bad and in between. You're going to experience pain and loss. Suffering. And we all got that in common. Or will have that in common. And at those times you need something to hold on to. And that's. Your spirituality. Your faith. 
and also uplifting and helping each other out because there's times when I want to get down and I'll be down sometimes. But then I'll hear a story or I'll see something else and I'll be like, well, that person's condition is just as bad, worse than mine. And they not complaining or, you know, you got to be strong because you may, you are the, you could be the example for somebody else. And if we all just gave up, then where would we be? How can I tell my children when they go to school or when they go through an experience or when they fall down or when, you know, something not going their way, uh, to be strong and have faith and, you know, keep pressing on. How can I tell them that if as their father, you know, I just give up? No, you got to fight. You fight as long as you can fight. And so I try to wake up every day thankful. I'm thankful for every moment that I'm not in pain or discomfort. And even when I am in pain and discomfort, I pray, I meditate, you know, I got a good woman who, she, she not perfect, but she's done a really good job through me being ill in this experience, especially with the amount of stuff that she got going on, the amount of children we have and working and holding things down. Well, I can't do none of that. And a lot of women would have been like, "Uh uh-uh, I can't do it. This is too much. Gone, you know, you're going to have to depend on your your family, your relatives, but or something to take care of you or, you know, complaining all the time or even not giving you... Because when you ill, sometimes you need your space. You don't need overcrowding, asking you too many questions or being like too all over you, smothering you, but you also need tenderness and care. And I believe for the most part, she didn't apply the right amount of each thing. And I thank, I thank the most half for that and for her. And I wish her nothing but goodness. I don't really say blessings. I say be more instead of be less. But what y'all would say is blessings. I wish her nothing but the best for that and just in general. Um, When I look at the landscape of things going on in the world, man, we just need more love and, and, and care. To everybody trying to be impress other people you know people was telling me like man you know and i even thought it myself should you even go online you know you're not looking crisp you're not clean and i said to myself you know it's not about that i want to come to the people Like they say, Yahshua, y'all know, say would say Jesus, come as you are. Don't try to put on no, because A, I don't even have the effort to do all of that, you know, fixing up my appearance and all. Some days I don't even have the effort to do all of that most of the time. That's not on my mind, keeping up no facade. I'm not worried anything about looks. When you in pain and discomfort, all you trying to worry about is feeling better, getting your spirit right in case you do transition or whenever you do transition down the line and, you know, get things right with the people you love. Make sure the people you know, the people you love, excuse me, know that you care about them and how you feel. And not leaving things unsaid or unsettled. That's really all you care about. And and trying to really leave whatever mark you can leave that's positive. 
on your family and if you can on your community or on the world. That's it. You're not worried about all that other stuff. All that other stuff is the worldly thinking. Well, how do I look? How do people perceive me? How is this? How is that? And it's like, I don't care about that. I don't care if somebody say, man, he could have combed his hair. I'm coming natural. This this is when it was put on me to make the video, so I made the video. I'm not going to run and try to fix myself up to look a certain way so they can be like, oh, he, a, he look cool. He's sick, but he look cool, man. He look good. You know what I'm saying? He don't even look. No, nah, I'm going to look like what the situation is. I'm not doing it for pity. I'm not on here talking about I'm trying to uplift somebody and we need more realness in the world. We don't need positive realness, not negative realness. We got enough for that. We need more positivity. Like if the brother battling something, why should I be trying to put on and worried about an appearance or worrying about what somebody might think about what I'm saying? Long as I know that the most has okay with what I'm saying long as I feel that, long as I'm okay with what I'm saying, and I know what I'm saying is positive, I'm not putting no negativity out into the world, or at least that's my goal, to not put no negativity out into the world. Like I said before, I've been humbled, and sometimes it takes things like that to happen for you to be humbled. So I don't know why I'm going through this test. I don't know why I'm going through this struggle. You know, it could be that. Maybe I needed to be humble. Maybe this is the test of my faith. You know, I don't know. I can't answer those questions. Only the creator, the almighty can answer those questions. You know, going back to Job, you know, I heard a sermon that was what was it was the brother was saying his interpretation was saying that when Job said this is the thing that I dreaded all my fears have come true when he basically when he said that that he bought it on to his himself because his doubt made those things happen but I reject that because the Most High himself said that Job was the most blameless and upright man in the world at the time. So I'm going to go with what the Most High say. That's what he specifically said to Satan. So I don't want to make it seem like, and, and this is important for me to say, don't let people make it always seem like every time some we we clearly know that sometimes some of the most innocent some of the best people you know things happen to so we not going to pretend like oh because something happened to somebody that it was definitely they fault they did something to make it happen that's not how it works the most high judges the righteous and the wicked. That's what the Bible says. So we all going to be tested. The difference is the test for the righteous is just a test of your faith and to make you stronger. Not just necessarily in the physical. It could be for the next round. It could be in the spiritual sense for your spirit, your soul. The test for the wicked may be giving them a chance to try to become righteous. But they're going to be tested on both levels, and you should not compare yourself to other people. The Bible definitely speaks against that, comparing yourself to others, looking at other people's situations, because especially with social media, that's the big trend now, to look at a 30-second to a minute clip from somebody and say, oh, um, they life is better than man, or ooh, look at what they doing. Ooh, look at how they, they wife treat them. That's that's what's up. That's how you supposed to be treated. 
Well, anybody can treat somebody a certain way for, for five minutes online. We don't know what really happens in their life behind the scenes. So stop looking at others. Worry about yourself and what you doing, how you can improve you. Because when you point the finger at other people, you know the old saying, if I point this finger at you, my thumb is pointing back at me. So while I'm trying to judge you or worry about what you're doing or compare myself to you and say, oh, either I'm better than you because of this. Well, you don't know what can happen. I got more than you. I got this car. You don't. Or this person's on the bus or the train. So they lesser than me because I drive a nice car. That's all baloney, man. That's BS. That's that's materialistic stuff. That stuff could be taken away so fast. Your health could be taken away. Your health is everything. You can't get up and go to work, do nothing. You can't impress no females or no males. If you laid up sick, you ain't impressing nobody. Things could be taken away in a flash. People be here today, gone tomorrow. So value your time. Value your loved ones. Get out that egotistical state. If you wrong people, apologize. It's nothing stopping you from apologizing to nobody but your ego. Because if somebody did something to you, you will want to be apologized to. And you will want to clear the air. Stop keeping all these grudges between your family members your your exes, especially if you have children, because when two elephants fight, don't nothing get hurt but the grass. And in that analogy, the elephants is the parents, the grass is the children. So you ain't doing nothing but hurting them children when you bickering or when you, uh, I refuse to let him see his babies. I refuse to answer his calls. I'm blocking her. She trying to let me know how the children doing, or she trying to get a couple hundred dollars to buy some, you know, some clothes and some diapers or whatever for the children. I'm blocking her. I'm not talking to her because something didn't go right in the relationship or just because I'm mad because we not together. I'm mad because we not together, so I'm not going to let the brother see his children. Like, women do this type of crazy stuff every day, and men as well, and you're not doing nothing but hurting your child. And also... Ultimately, you stain in your spirit because you was given that gift of creation from the Most High for those lives to be able to come into existence through you. And you disrespecting the Creator, you disrespecting your ancestors, you disrespecting yourself and your children when you behave like that. So, I mean, I know it's not nothing that nobody probably want to hear. But it's like that medicine, that that old school Father John or cod liver oil, that type of medicine your, your grandmother or great-grandmother or grandfather used to give you. You don't want it, but at the end of the day, it go down bitter, but you feel better after you get it. So, I'm going I'm to end this with just saying... That I wish nothing but peace and love upon you all. You know, any type of feedback you want to give, I'm here for it. I would love to talk, you know, about anything positive. Anybody who need uplifting or anybody that just want to talk. Hey, hopefully you could uplift me. You know, we can basically iron sharpens iron. We can help each other out. But I'm here for it. Again, this is Jawanza Yisrael, J. Yisrael, shining off, signing off, I'm sorry, also known as the Guardian of Truth. And I just want to leave you with nothing but good fortune, peace and love from the Most High. And thank you for your time and for listening. I'll be at you, y'all willing, the next time, and we can talk further.